My name is Rosalind Marsden. I've recently been appointed as the new EU Special Representative for Sudan. And uh, my mission under the authority of uh, Baroness Ashton, the European Union's foreign policy chief, is to deal with the complex nexus of issues related to Sudan, uh, particularly the political, security, human rights, humanitarian and development issues. Sudan faces enormous challenges at the moment. Uh, it's, it's entering the final critical phase of the 2005 Comprehensive Peace Agreement which brought to an end Africa's longest running civil war and cost the lives of uh, some two million people. And the Comprehensive Peace Agreement will culminate in January with the holding of, of a referendum on self-determination for southern Sudan and on the future status of Abyei. So this period over the next few months will be decisive in determining whether Sudan moves forward to, towards lasting peace and stability or whether it, uh, it slips back into conflict, which we must avoid at all costs. So the eyes of the world uh, are really upon Sudan at the moment. And this was demonstrated uh, by a, a high-level meeting in New York last week, convened by the UN Secretary General in the presence of uh, Salva Kiir and Ali Osman Taha, the Vice Presidents of Sudan, in the presence of uh, President Obama and 11 he other heads of state and government as well as senior representatives from 25 countries and organisations. So it really is a, a, a critical time. My mandate is to deliver the European Union's strategic objectives to, on Sudan, which were set out most recently in the Council conclusions of the 26th of July this year. And essentially they boil down to six, to six key objectives. The first is to support the full and timely implementation of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement, including in particular the holding of peaceful on-time referenda on southern Sudan and on Abyei, which reflect the wishes of the Sudanese people. Secondly, um, the uh, reaching an agreement on post-referendum arrangements, because ensuring peaceful and constructive relations between the Sudanese parties, irrespective of the outcome of the referendum, will be crucial for uh, the future of Sudan and the wider region. Thirdly, we want to support uh, capacity building and provide other assistance to help southern Sudan uh, face the many challenges ahead. Fourthly, and very importantly, we remain focused on Darfur. Uh, we want to address uh, the problems of insecurity and support efforts to reach a lasting, comprehensive and inclusive peace agreement. Fifthly, we want to respond to the humanitarian needs of Sudan right across the country um, and also the development needs of the war affected population. And finally, we, we, we are, we're strong supporters of human rights in Sudan and support the work of the International Criminal Court. So um, I've been mandated to play a leading role in delivering these objectives and um, as you can see it's a, it's a very big agenda. Um, so I will be, my role is to bring the European Union's considerable influence and wide range of policy instruments to bear in support of a peaceful and stable Sudan. And obviously I can't do all this on my own. Uh, I will be working very closely with EU member states and also with EU colleagues, uh, both in the field, in Brussels and elsewhere. And I will also be actively engaged with um, other international players, in particular the United Nations, and the African Union, including President Mbeki and his panel. Um, also working closely with the US Special Envoy for Sudan, General Gratian, as well as other key international and regional partners. And much of my time will be spent in the field uh, and traveling in the region. So there's a lot to do. Firstly, uh, uh, on, the, on the Comprehensive Peace Agreement and its implementation, um, there's a, obviously a big focus at the moment on preparations for the referendum 
the, the preparations for the referendum for southern Sudan are moving forward, but they're behind schedule. So we've been trying to do everything we can to accelerate those preparations. Um, and the European Union will be sending a, um, a referendum observation mission to monitor the referendum, including the voter registration process. Um, the ABA referendum preparations are further behind because the ABA referendum commission has not yet been established. So that is a worry and that's something that we're pressing the parties to move forward on quickly. That's the north-south issues. Then on Darfur, uh, the violence in Darfur caused the death of hundreds of thousands of people and millions were displaced and they're still living miserable lives in the IDP camps. Um, so this, this whole situation has you know, really stirred the conscience of the world. So it, it's, it's vital that the European Union remains very focused on this. And we've been, we've been doing everything we can to support the efforts of Mr. Basilei, uh, backed by the government of Qatar, to uh, try to negotiate a comprehensive peace agreement in Doha. We will continue to support that. And of course, the European Union is also, uh, is also one of the biggest funders of the UN-African Union peacekeeping mission, UNAMID. It, it funds over 40% of the costs. So we have a very big stake and we're making a very big contribution to the efforts there. My role is to try to coordinate all the various instruments available to the European Union um, so that we can be as effective as possible with the very you know, considerable um, instruments and assets that we've got available to us. I think if we really, we really bring all this together, then we can uh, play, an, play an important role. It's a very critical moment, as I said, and um, it's, it's absolutely essential that things move in a peaceful direction. So I think this is why the whole world is currently focused on Sudan. Um, you know, we all share concerns that uh, we don't want things to revert uh, into the conflict that we've seen in the past. But I think if we all uh, if we all coordinate, um, if the international community as a whole does its very best to coordinate, I think we can, we can make a real difference here. We are still very concerned about the security and humanitarian situation in Darfur. Um, the, there has been further fighting between government forces and rebel forces over the last few months. The, the tri inter-tribal fighting in Darfur has c continues to cause quite high fatalities. And there's been a spate of kidnappings of um, humanitarian workers and, and expulsions, including of UN staff. Um, so the situation you know, continues to be a matter of, of serious concern. So I, I think we need to you know, do everything we can to continue to talk to, to the government, uh, to the parties, and to, to try to move this forward. And we are very focused uh, uh, on the humanitarian situation, pressing for, for humanitarian access across Darfur um, so that um, we can provide humanitarian assistance to the vulnerable groups in need in Darfur, in the camps but also in the rural areas. Well, never mind. I suppose you have somebody to carry it. Well, that's... <laughs>